Hi folks, I'm The Lost Mapper and today we're going to do day one of the 30 day map challenge 2023 and that is a map about points. I have pre-planned this a little bit uh, so I kind of know where I'm heading but I'm going to try to recreate the journey and show you some stuff that I learned. Uh, so we're going to do a map of the national parks in California. So I have a project I'm going to set up here, create a new project. I'm going to click save on it. I'm going to save that inside of my GS, GIS folder. I've got a 30 day map challenge folder. And in there I've got a folder for day one points. And I'm just going to call this day zero one points. I'm putting the zero in front of the one just so that when these get alphabetized, day one will come before uh, day 10 and day 11. We'll see that if we get there. Uh, I'm also going to head up to properties for the project and go to general and just call the project title day one points. I'm leaving out the zero because it's just the title. It's not the file name. I don't need to worry about that so much. Okay, then I'm going to head over to Google and I am going to look for National Park Services GIS. And I'm going to head to their tools and data page here. And if I scroll down, I see that there's the NPS open data page, which is going to take me to their, their public ArcGIS REST service page. Uh, and I'm actually going to click on boundaries and what I want is I'm going to get both the boundaries and the centroids of those boundaries. So that sort of center point of a, of a area. So click on the centroids file and I'm going to click download. There's 432 records. Uh, I'm going to choose shape file because I right now feel like that's the easiest to deal with. I will head back to where we were and I'm also going to get the boundaries in case I decide I want to use those. Also click download on the shape file. And then I'm going to head over to here, which is my folders. And I'm just going to bring that folder in and then copy these files. It was trying to give them the same name, but it couldn't and bring those into there as well. And then I'm going to head over to QGIS and look in my project home and into that folder. And I'm going to add both the shape and the centroids. And then I'm going to zoom in on the map a bit. And what would be nice is if I could actually see the states. So I'm going to Google again for US states shape file. And I'm going to use the file from census.gov and we've got 2018. Is there anything more recent? Mm, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about it for now. Uh, this is, this is not a map to be precise or up to date. It's more just to go through the steps and show you how things get made. Uh, so if we scroll down to states, we can see that there's three files here. There's we can see that there's five meters, 20 meters, and 500 kilometers, I believe. And you can see there are different sizes. Essentially what it boils down to is the bigger the size, the more detail that the uh, shape is going to have. I might say, be, well, we're gonna do California, so maybe it would be actually good to have uh, a more detailed shape file. So I'm gonna download that, head back to my folders and also move that into my project folder, head back to QGIS and go and add that shape file as well. It's going to ask me if I want to choose a transformation. So everything I loaded so far has been 3857 and this particular one is 4269. Uh, again, I'm not too concerned about accuracy here, so I'm just going to choose the default that's that's chosen there. And then I'm going to move those underneath all the other layers. Fantastic. And then I'm going to zoom in on California. Great. And so 
let's take a look at the data that's provided. Let's look at the centroids. I'm going to press F6 to open up this data. Uh, I'm not going to worry about docking it today, but there is a bunch of stuff in here that I don't care about. And I'm going to use organized columns to get rid of a few of those things. So I don't care about creation dates, who the creator was, who the edit editor or edit date is, global ID, area ID. I'm going to leave area code and unit name in. Don't care about date edit. Don't care about region, any of these. I'm going to leave unit type in and I'm going to leave park name in. So now I've got some data that I can read as a human. And so I can see that there are different unit types. And I know that I want to just look at parks. Um, and I'm going to filter this layer. So if I right click on my layer and choose filter, I then have the ability to filter based on any of the fields. And I am going to choose unit type. And what's cool is you can click unit type and then over on the right here, you can, under, in the value section, I can click all to see all the potential values that are in there. Uh, I'm going to say unit type is equal to national park. And you can hit test to see, to make sure that it actually works. And it'll tell me how many results there are, 62 rows, that's great. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And now I'm only going to see Hmm, why? Oh, I also want to filter that to California. I was wondering why I was seeing other places. So I'm gonna come back in here. I'm gonna say and, and choose state. And let's also see what possible values there are. You can check this box, unfiltered, use unfiltered layer to show you all the values regardless of whatever expression you down, have down here already. Click all. I'm going to choose California. I've got to get that equal signs in there. Hit test again. And now I've got just nine rows. I'll hit OK. Click OK again. And now I can see that I've only got points, dots happening inside of California. I'm also going to do the same thing with the boundaries. So I'm going to hit F6 again. Uh, let's organize those columns. Get rid of most of them. Let's see here. They seem to be mostly the same except for a few additional ones. Hit OK. All right, we've got our unit type again and we've got our state. Cool. So I'm going to right click on the layer and choose filter again. And let's see, I'm going to do unit type equals. And let's just make sure it has the same values again. Yes, National Park. Cool. I've got an extra quote there. And state equals California. We'll click test. Nine rows again. Great. Click OK on that. And we've got our state of California. We've got our park boundaries. And then we've got the centroids for those parks. And why don't we make this look a little bit nicer? These colors are a little bit weird. So I'm gonna double click on the states. I'm gonna to go to symbology and I'm gonna change the color. Let me see if I get a, yeah. I'll change the color to a light green and hit okay on that. And then I'm gonna to go to the boundaries and I'm going to choose a darker green for that. It's a little bit, it's a little bit neon, but that's okay. I'm also going to go to the centroids, double click on that and choose dot black to make that the marker that I want to use. Cool. Now what I'd like to be able to do is actually label each of these things so I know what they are. So let's double click on the centroids again, go to labels, and we're going to choose a single label and we're going to use unit name. And we can now see those, but let's fix that up. Uh, let's make the font a little bit bigger. 
and let's use a buffer so that it pops out from the background. That looks all right, but there's some of them are kind of on top of each other. And I'd like to make it easier to see where they are and what they're referring to. So what we can do is use something called a callout, which allows us to move the label away from the point and it draws a line to the point. So double click on the layer again and underneath labels, there's a section called callouts and you're going to check that. And I'm just gonna change the line style to a dot just so it's differentiated from the lines that are drawing the boundaries of the states. Uh, so you don't see anything yet. What you want to do is head up to the label toolbar and then over to this move label button, click on that. And I can now hover over each of the labels and see what it is. I can then click on the label and it's going to ask, Hey, you're going to move this label. I need to keep track of what the label is for when I store the location of the label. So what do you want me to use to reference that? And generally it's going to be some type of ID, like ID, feature ID or object ID. And in this case, it's picked the, def it's picked either it's guessed correctly or it's just the first field. We're going to use object ID. Um, we can see that there's all those other options in there's uh, there as well, all the other fields. So click object ID and click OK. And now I can click and move these labels. And you can see it's drawing a line to them. Uh, and that allows us to see the point and the uh, shape of it without the label being on top of it. Let's move this one here. And this last one here. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That looks okay. All right, save that. And then we're going to make a print layout. So head up to project, new print layout. Uh, I'm going to call this portrait because it's California and it's tall. And I'm going to right click on the background of this and choose page properties. Going to move myself out of the way for a moment and choose letter because I'm in the US and I'm going to change orientation to portrait. And I think for now I'll leave myself down here. Um, and then I'm going to go up on the left here and use the add map button and draw a map onto the page. And actually I should probably make this, I'm going to click this zoom full so I can see the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to stretch out this map a little bit. I'm going to try to use my mouse wheel to move in on the map. So by default, it's going to affect the whole page. What I need to do is switch to this move item content tool. And then now I can actually affect the map itself, not the rectangle that it's inside of. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to go with this for now. And I'm going to bring this Oh no, I'm still in that mode. So I'm going to command Z what I just did. And then I'm going to switch back to the select move item tool. And now I'm going to shrink this. And then I need to switch back to this move content just to adjust it a bit more. Cool. And then I'm going to go to the title tool, add label, sorry, not title tool, add label. Going to draw myself a label. And I'm going to call this National Parks of California. I'm going to click on the font button and I'm going to choose Futura. And I'm going to bump this up pretty big. All right. And then I'm going to scroll down. We're actually I'm going to pull this up so I can more easily get to the pieces here, navigate back up and center align that. And in order to provide a little more distinction, I'm actually going to select the map, head down to frame and turn that on and actually give it a thickness of half a millimeter. 
This, it's a little bit of an awkward layout. Uh, I will leave it as an exercise to the viewer to tweak this. Um, we can also see that the layout here inside of the map, if I toggle back to the map, it's a little bit different because the scale and size of the map here in the layout is different than that of in the actual map view. Uh, this is something I find myself fighting with in QGIS a lot. The sort of workaround that I found is if you click on the map here, you can see the scale, copy that scale number, then come back to the map view and paste that into the scale number down here, and then make the magnifier 200%. And now it looks pretty close to what you're seeing here, even the way the National Redwood National Park uh, label is positioned, looks, looks pretty equivalent. Let me move myself out of the way here again. And then what I'm gonna do is use the uh, move label tool again, just to adjust these so that they're all sort of off of the shape of the state um, and definitely not, you know, crowded. In fact, what might be good is to actually have these all sort of uh, aligned to the same point on the left. I'm not going to worry about it being perfect, but uh, I'll get them somewhat aligned. And that might help make it a little bit easier to read. So that that one just disappeared because it was butted up against this one too much. So as soon as I move this one, yeah, I should see it come back. Cool. And I'm gonna move this one down just so the line does not crowd up against that point. And if I switch back, I'm hitting Command tilde to switch back and forth between the layout view and the map view. And if I click refresh on this, now they're way out. Why are they so far out? Why don't we move this map a little bit more and now they're back. Fantastic. Uh, all right, I do want this to look a little bit better because I'm gonna use it as a thumbnail for video probably. So I'm just gonna move that up and leave that as is. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to save that. I'm going to click uh, export as PDF. And I'm going to call this day one points. Click save. I'm going to leave everything as is and click save. It lets me know that it saved it. I click on this to get it to real, get to it real quickly. Double click on the PDF to open it up. And command zero to zoom to full, full view. And that is a quick points map showing the centroids and lo general location of these different parks. If you have any questions about what we did today, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, if there's anything you'd like me to dig more into in the future, also leave a comment. And I'm hoping to bring you another 29 of these this month. See ya.